Peter de Costa is a senior advisor on policy and strategic communications to the Africa Progress Panel, who joins us now in studio right here in Nairobi. Mr. de Costa, thank you very much for your time this evening. We've seen quite a bit of progress, a shift, if you will, in debate towards better access to debate to information about resource sharing contracts in places like Uganda and Guinea. Do you feel there's a shift towards meeting the recommendations with that in mind, towards the recommendations of the report? Yes, I think so. I think we've had many years of experience of what can go wrong. Uh, there are several countries in Africa that have had natural resources for decades, uh, and we've learned good and bad lessons. So I think there'll be a lot more emphasis on those lessons for the uh, newly emergent uh, resource-rich countries. Uh, we also, I mean, we all know that uh, in the absence of strong natural resource governance, there's absolutely no guarantee whatsoever that there any resources that are tapped will benefit the citizens of the country. So clearly that's an important lesson. Uh, we also have um, uh, uh, recognition that um, the international uh, private sector uh, has to play by certain ground rules and that governments need to enable that work. Uh, and, and we also have citizens being much more aware of the fact that it's not just enough to pull the oil out of the ground or the diamonds or anything else. Uh, there needs to be some way to internalize the value chain, create employment locally. So in all of these things are lessons that we've learned which I think will stand us in good stead going forward. Indeed. Uh, tackling tax avoidance was also another key focus of the report. European countries, of course, have had quite a bit of problems dealing with this uh, particular matter. What lessons can they offer, perhaps, that can be applied to the African context? Uh, when uh, our chair, Kofi Annan, launched the report in, in Cape Town today, uh, he said that this was a multilateral problem which required multilateral action. So on the one hand, there needs to be a considered effort uh, by the international community to work with Africa to strengthen uh, you know, tax uh, legislation and also to build capacity to be able to uh, uh, address uh, this problem. But on the other hand, there's also an extent to which Africa has already been quite active in, uh, in tightening its domestic resource mobilization. Uh, a lot of countries are trying to reduce their dependence on aid and the presence of these resources and these orders of magnitude from natural resources can only um, uh, uh, incentivize our tax authorities to be better at collecting uh, tax. I think we need a, a combination of regulation in an existing rules and also we need enforcement. Uh, and we also need to look beyond our individual countries at the region. We need to look at things like the African Mining Vision, which was passed by the African Union, which actually lays down a whole bunch of recommendations on the score. We also need to look at the African Peer Review Mechanism, mm -hmm. uh, which is a mechanism for friendly persuasion, uh, whereby countries are compare each, each other's uh, governance, uh, including in natural resource uh, uh, management, and try to persuade each other to do better. Speaking of rules and laws, the Dodd-Frank Act in the United States has gotten quite a bit of focus in the report. Some, however, have argued that this report, this law's implementation essentially takes capital investment in jobs and hurts the civilians it intends to help. What response would you have to those who make that argument? Well, the Dodd-Frank the Dodd Act is a, is a very progressive piece of legislation uh, which uh, compels uh, companies that are listed on the U.S. Stock Exchange to publish uh, and to, to make public the the payments that they make to governments and, and countries in which they do business. Uh, there can be absolutely nothing wrong with transparency uh, in this sphere, especially when countries like Guinea, uh, one of the poorest countries in the world, has recently published all its contracts in relation to, to mining uh, on iron ore uh, on the internet. Uh, so if Guinea can do that, uh, then surely that should be something that the private sector can also do. Indeed. We'll have to leave it there for the time being. Mr. Peter de Costa, thank you very much for your time this evening. He was live in the studio right here in uh, Nairobi talking about the need to keep uh, African money on African soil. That, of course, was a key thrust of the report of the Africa Progress Panel earlier today.